Automatrix M-Track theft recovery operation. It's Monday the 29th of July 2019. So July has been pretty quiet up until now, but this morning we've had three phone calls from three separate customers advising they've had assets stolen. So we've put the first tracker into alarm. This Automatrix M-Track is reporting a cell site up at Bolton. That's for a stolen tractor. We've got the unit in a 30 minute sleep cycle while we get to this location because the battery is quite low on it. So we want to re retain the battery as much as possible. It's been on the tractor for nearly four years. It's an older model um, tracker. It's got no GPS. So we're going to have to do a radio sweep at that location. Um, it's now just gone two o'clock in the afternoon. We're, we're sort of Birmingham, we're about 100 miles away. So we're going to be there about half past three. The second asset, it's a Honda Fireblade, a bit of a mean machine, um, 2009. And uh, we tracked the position using the automated send track and it gave us a GPS uh, close to some garages. And we've relayed that position to the police and the police have been to that location, can't see the bike. So what we'll do is we go to that location, um, see if we can pick up the RF. If we pick up the RF, we'll call the police and get some assistance because they might need to get a warrant. And the third asset is a three tonne Thwaites dumper. That's reported not far away from the fire blade. That's probably about 15 miles across town. It's quite a new machine. We've found quite a few of these dumper trucks. Hopefully it hasn't moved far. We can see from the GSM cell sites that it hasn't actually appeared to have moved far. As long as we can get it in Alum and it's in the same location in the West Brom area, that'll be fantastic. Uh, but neither the motorcycle or the dumper truck are in Alum yet. We need to get those in Alum. They're due in around about six o'clock this evening. So that's the whole idea of why we're going up to do the tractor first, and then we'll come back down after we found the tractor. So yeah, pretty, pretty amazing. We've never done three recoveries in one day before, so let's see how we get on. If we can get 100% success on all three of these, we'll be well happy. We just pulled over, put the roof antenna on. We're on the outskirts of Bolton. Um, I've got a couple of postcodes from the office, so I'm gonna go to the first one, and uh, we'll see if we can pick up this signal for the stolen tractor. Can't see it being in a urban area, but it may, maybe there's a, an, industrial, an industrial yard around there, or a greenfield site somewhere. So it's saying half a mile down here on the left is the first cell site. If we don't pick up the signal there, then we'll head to the second postcode and then we'll have to just grid the area and do a, do a search just with the RF. No GPS on this unit. There is an industrial estate. I can see it on the map. Europa Industrial Estate. There could be other stuff in there, generators, diggers. Normally we find loads of stuff when this happens. Yeah. I can walk in with the handheld receiver. So literally if a police officer was here, we'd be literally five minutes and then we'd be able to identify it. They've just come back to me that's all, sir. I've just said that you need police to attend us. The tractor is inside a lock-up. The tractor's yeah. stolen. It yeah. could be identified within 10 minutes. Yeah. The tractor could be worth 40 to 50 grand. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. I've spoken to... Um, David, and yeah. I told him to give you 10 minutes, then give you a call. He's got to travel an hour and a half from Cumbria down, he said. So Cumbria? I said, to speak to you. Yeah, well, that's where they are. So I've spoken with the customer. He's going to head this way in readiness for the police undoing these industrial units. That's if, if we can get them undone tonight. They might need a warrant, so I don't know. So I've been waiting an hour for the police here at the moment, um, and the vehicle was just pulled up behind me. Uh, so I've called the police again with new information. Uh, I have to talk quite quiet because it's quite close to me. Hopefully the police will turn up in a few minutes. Uh, maybe we're getting a rest here. Let's see what happens. That's it. How would you get in there? You didn't get it. <laughs> Literally just in there, isn't it? They, put, they, were, they were pulled up here about an hour ago. How the hell do we get it out? Yeah. Well, he's got a big truck. 
I know I was getting it to scan all the pallets. Yeah, you should drag them out. I mean, if you, I said, to, I, I rang in, I said, there's four of them here now. I think this is, this is yeah, in now. One was tied up with little domestics and all sorts. Yeah, it's right thing to get around the back, but. Yeah, you didn't say about the bloody obstacle course. All right. To be honest with you, it's, uh, is it worth the risk uh, falling off there? I'm not going to fall off. Right, we're in. No forced entry. This has to be one of the shittiest yards I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah he drove that out. That's the, there you go, look, PD52. He, he, was, he was actually parking that up. Yeah. No, I mean, um, oh. you know who owns this? Yeah, that's. Is that his? That's his, yeah, the guy there. It's his tractor. Can't see any plates on it. No, no, it no. It's normally built on the top there. It's not on. Uh, There's a plate here on the inside, serial number. Have you still got that bit of paper with the VIN on it? Got keys here. Know, do you want to just try it? Make sure it's uh, still fires up. Yeah, could do. No, there's gone. There's no bloody key here. This is completely blocked in. So we got the wall this side. We got roof up there. We got a steel shipping container here, blocking some of the signal. We got wooden pallets here, more wooden pallets, and then wooden pallets on this truck. He spent an age trying to lock the bloody thing when, when he was leaving. Police are off to attend the address of the landowner. So we're on our way back from this tractor find. Um, the police just took too long to get there. You know, that's, that's taken a lot of time. Um, we were on site with the RF picked up at those industrial units about five o'clock and I think the police turned up about quarter past eight. We've had to leave, basically, let, let the police, they're gonna cut that lock off, they're gonna um, tow away the tractor and recover it, and they're also gonna tow away transit pickup because it was on the wrong number plate, so they're treating that as a stolen car because it's obviously on the wrong number plate. It's quite an old tractor, that one. It's, um, it's still probably worth eight or nine grand, 10 grand, but the way that was tucked up away there, uh, right in the corner, and for a you know GSM and RF tracker that's 10 years old, I think we did quite well to find it. And the customer's gonna get his tractor back. Okay, so just pulled over. We're now five or six miles from the, the GPS location for this stolen Honda Fireblade. Okay, so we're at the GPS location behind this residential gate here in front of this car, and then there's four garages beyond that. Um, we've got good GPS positions showing um, that it's probably in those garages. The customer, um, he's just been on the phone telling us he's been burgled again. So for another time, for the following day, so he's really having a hard time. Let's go around to grab the car now, then we'll drive around. Oh, okay, we can drive around. <sighs> Apparently it's a bit further up the road. So we, the police have found another way in to have a look to see if we can get this motorcycle. Hi, Richard. Yeah, I'm with the police, so we're, we're just we're just going in to the area, but I'm not sure if they're going to get a warrant on the garage yet. But they, they seem keen. So you still at the location? Yeah, we're just we've managed. They found the route, even though it was the locked fence. There's another way in. So. I went back to the um, motorbike area and met with the police. All right. And we went and climbed over, well, we, one of them climbed over the fence, but then we found another way in. So we all went in and we've identified a couple of garages, but they wouldn't get a warrant at garage 27. Well, they're reluctant to knock on the, knock on the doors because they don't think they're going to get the cooperation. We've, we've been able to look around and make sure that there's nothing lying on the floor, which is good. 
you know we haven't found and also there's some fences at the back which we've looked all over we would risk you know having to speak to the residents and then you know no they're not going to cooperate I no they're not going to what's your situation now are you leave, um leaving there i'm going about seven miles down the road another stolen uh, piece of plant equipment i'll probably find this other bit of kit by about half three four o'clock and then i'll just have catch a couple of hours kit and then they said just call them back up and they send someone straight over so hey, we're now heading towards um the cell site for this stolen dumper truck where there's no gps position uh, so we're just going to do a rf find at this location okay we picked up a, a signal an rf signal for this dumper i can see it it's just up in front there we go surprise no one called that in six o'clock in the morning we found the dumper in birmingham at this location underneath this tree Again, underneath the trees. They like it underneath the trees. We picked the signal up just literally 10 minutes ago. Um, we stopped in the middle of the night and got some sleep. Yep, we'll have that. Bit obvious. I think they've scraped the name for there. Driving area look, looks okay. Nothing's been pulled up. The label's come off the back there as well. Right, I've just found your dumper. It's just tucked underneath a tree right in the middle of some residential houses. So I think your guys can just come and get it. Does it sound like kids are at it? Kids? No, 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 I don't think so. It's all tucked up. It's got um, the white plastic barriers and that. They've lifted the whole lot and they've, they've wrapped the signs around the dumper to make it look like it's legit so that no one would call in. We should have a lad kicking around um, fairly close to there anyway. That's the customer coming now with the pickup truck to come and pick up this dumper. No electrics. Dead man's hand. No, that's the uh, Rob's bar. So we've got dead man in the wagon. That's the second time that truck's gone past, that white one. So we couldn't get that dumper started and they bought a fitter to help us get it started. And the bandits had unplugged one of the cables inside, probably to stop anyone nicking it. And uh, stopped us from putting it on the trailer, but he, he fixed it literally in two minutes. So that's the dumper recovered. We've got plenty of officers to open this garage. We're just waiting for the council to confirm. We can break the lock off. Current situation is we've got two police cars in attendance. Uh, we're just waiting for the sergeant to come for permission to unlock garages. Um, the GPS is reporting. Number 27 is, is the one we think it's inside. That's the one we're going to try and break that lock open uh, first. We don't need a warrant because that number 27 is... Uh, these garages are rented by um, Birmingham Council. And um, they're saying that number 27, number 28, which is boarded up, and number 26 are all vacant, so they shouldn't have locks on them. Number 25 is actually rented, so we don't think it's in 25. There's no um, tire marks in this mud here it's to indicate it's gone into these garages. Uh, and then also we found that number plate on top of number 27, so that's from the stolen BMW, so everything's looking like it's in there. Hopefully within a few minutes we should get a result. Thank you. 
spikes behind it. Yeah. Yippity doo dahs. Like fox hunt, exactly, it's actually black one, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Black Honda five blades. Gold wheels, yeah? Yeah, gold wheels. Yeah. Well done, that's good, good call. Thing is, if we leave, yeah. they'll know where we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a pretty mean machine, goes pretty fast. The coffee's on the way, and just leave you in case they come back. That's all. So that's a good result. We called it right, number 27. There's also a stolen Seat Leon FR in there. That looks quite nice. And they probably had the BMW in there before, so this is like a stash house. What result? Right, so we're not going to wait for the recovery truck to take the stolen car or the stolen motorbike. It's, uh, it's been just over 24 hours since we've set off to try and find three stolen assets and we've got all three located. And we just let these officers finish off on here. Yeah, doing some due diligence, checking all the other garages. Make sure they're all locked up. The owner's pleased. We've got a bonus stolen Seat. Lush. Right, the customer's got his bike back. Um, well, he will have it back. They're going to do some forensics on it. Um, his jacket was stolen in the burglary. His helmet was stolen. The jacket was in the back of that um, Seat. That was also stolen on false plates. Looked like that was some sort of um, burglary car or something. It was full of junk and rubbish. Well, I had a quick look through the uh, through the windows, and there's all sorts of rubbish in there. So, fingers crossed, they can get a match on some DNA or something. Cause they're they're going to do a full forensic sweep on that vehicle. Three recoveries, two additional vehicles, five in total in 24 hours, and hopefully two sets of arrests for the tractor and for the motorcycle. We're pretty pleased with that one. Crack it.